Yo, what's up guys, it's me, Paradox Gaming here back with another Jurassic World video. In this video, we are going to be going over some simple tips for challenge mode. Okay, so let's go on to my first normal um, challenge mode save and then we shall start explaining explaining some of my seven tips so the first of my tips in my list is building proximity so as you can see I'm not sure this is an awkward island to show it on but as you can see shut up Hammond so as you can see the like the area where they've done so I put the medium power station now this is an awkward island but normally I'd have them together so if they do go out and you need to reboot them they're all together now this is a terrible island to show but normally you want the ranger teams near your small power stations of course you can't exactly do it on this tiny island you want your like your ACU centers near your carnivores not that you want a ton of carnivores and Stuff like that so you want all your power stations together ranger teams near the Ranger teams near the power stations and then transport units near The carnivores etc etc now this of course is not a good world to like to show on because it's the it's the tiny island why would you ever have a need to like it's it's the island that's based on like where you put stuff it's probably one of the harder islands anyway next one is during is open your emergency sense centers the second you hit hear a storm warning open your centers it will decrease your like your income for a little bit but it's not worth it to like repeatedly be destroyed by storms over and over again because that can get really like annoying now the third one is to refresh contact it especially near the start like up to three stars if you have a contract that you are not going to do i bet you a ton that it will always be better to terminate the contract even unless if for example it cost 400,000 to terminate it and you only have 200,000 then it's not worth it but if it's 50,000 and you have 100,000 it's better to terminate it if it's 20,000 and you have 50,000 it's better to terminate it because you will get new contracts that will gain you money this is such a good method now another way of getting money that I don't think I have on any of my things that I've forgotten is let me go into the research center a second is basically you only need certain upgrades so for example genetic most of them you and fossil, fossils you can use but for example a number of them can be totally useless so just for example building upgrades only a few of them are worth it but the most important upgrade you should get at one star first thing you get is the dig yield dig yield is the best way of making money in jurassic world and a very good in side income in normal that this is because in jurassic world no in in like jurassic difficulty like everything is taken from your hammer foundation fee like almost all of your income now that's just a total dig yield is a total separate income that comes from your dig expedition centers and yeah free money my next one is five star facility where wherever you are in a playthrough you should have five star facility rating the entire time it is not hard you need a very few buildings in fact you only need that's uh, three buildings so you need a restaurant uh i don't know why i have gift shops sometimes you'll use a bar now i did say in this last so you need restaurant arcade and clothes shop so restaurant no arcade rest the clothes shop and then i had a fast food there for some reason and gift shop which i use sometimes when you haven't unlocked the later ones and restaurant now you do want to keep these near your hotels and viewing galleries but also viewing galleries are not important if you go onto my viewing you have one viewing gallery here that's a hotel one viewing area there 
and nothing down here. It's really not important, however, it does slightly increase your income. However, Hammond Foundation t fee takes a cut that, so it's not always worth it. It's not necessary for five star facility rating. Now, the next one is the dino price per rating. So, as you can see, each dino has a different base starting point. Now, some of the best ones to make, you can work it out just by dividing. For example, let's work it out for Brachiosaurus. So it's around 800k for to incubate one, and it is 120 rating. So for each, let me, if I get a calculator up, even though I easily could do it in my head, it probably took longer to get the calculator up, but it is a 6.4 like it costs 6.4k per rating so that is i think that's about that's pretty okay for example the best one is struthiomimus so the rating is 9 and it's 30k so if you do 30k and then you divide that what well, no if you do if you do 30 because it's 30k and divide that by 9 it is three you get for every 3k you get one rating 3.3k you get one rating so that is truthio mimus is a, the best one it's in the game fast. now another one that it's good because like of course it still takes time to do so if i just uh clear the genomes i'll reset genomes so the brachiosaurus you use a lot is 625k 625 and if you divide that by 116 um, well, you get 5.3k per rating. Now, it's about double the Struthiomimus, but they are a lot more, so they're quicker to breed, and also they're way easier than some of the other things to house. Okay, they're not the easiest, but for example, Brachiosauruses are really hard, and then Triceratops is good, but basically you just want to get a ton. Look how many, um, Look how many different Diplodocus are. Okay, I've mixed Sinoceratopses in here and Tyangosauruses. But the Diplodocuses, there is a ton of them. So, get a good dino price per rating. Now, fence quick repair. So, for example, let's say a storm... Okay, whatever. A storm has come through here and it's wreck cover and it has deleted... It's got... It's destroyed this fence what you want to do is not get a ranger team out but get use your de demolition tool delete it get your fence back and put your fence back that's a different fence doesn't matter i've finished this so just like that you've repaired it and normally okay maybe it's less likely to repair it as fast and it'll be in a more awkward position if a storm has wrecked through and some of them the dinos will be angry and wanting to get out However, you can just delete it, and normally only a few of your dinos will get out. Now, my seventh and final tip will be used gates. As you can see, the Hammond Foundation thing, this one will go to many different things. So this, this Hammond Foundation Creation Lab will go to this pen, this pen, and earlier it also went to this pen. I had a fence going along here. And an extra gate there earlier in the playthrough and it would account for three pens so use that but that's only three pens and then for example this one only has one pen but then if you need to you can just get an acu unit and trank it and then move it all the way across but yeah um so that is what another one of my, my tips is to use gates now in some of the different islands like isla nubla etc then Gates can be really ex useful because you can have them going to eight or more pens. So that is uh, some of the other things that I've done on some of my other runs. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you did like it, make sure to like and subscribe because apparently it makes it six times more likely for people to do so me saying that. Even though I don't like doing so. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this gave you some hints and tips into this game. Apart from that, bye for now. See ya.